always perplex me. <laughs> now we're empty here. Full, full. <laughs> I don't know some days. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. It is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of quick announcements. Um, actually, it says the flower beds need attention. Actually, the flower beds are doing quite well. Thank you to those that are working on those. If you'd like to help, we can always use more help. Uh, the mowing schedule is in the narthex if you're interested in mowing the grass. A reminder, August 14th, that's the Sunday where you get to sleep an extra hour because we're having the church picnic and outdoor worship service. It'll be at Prentice Park, 10 o'clock. So join us for that. Worship's at 10, and then the picnic is to follow. And there'll be a sign-up sheet in the narthex probably week after next, somewhere in there, so we can start signing up for stuff there. And then a reminder that your second quarter financial statements are in the mailboxes. Um, now, for those that are visiting today, you picked a great day. Well, it's a sad day, and it's a great day. It's a sad day because today's Roger and Sally's last Sunday with us. They're, they're moving away. But it's a great day because we have cake. <laughs> so you can join us for cake after worship today. And you can wish Sally and Roger best wishes on their, their new adventure. So we will miss you. And we have your new address, so we'll keep you in the loop. All right. Come anytime. <laughs> okay. All right. Prayer list today. We have... Penny Nelson Newman, Herman Wartko, Ingrid Brand, Andrea Gunderson, uh, Lowell Nutt, Harold Larson, and Penny Larson. And then uh, we also have adding today uh, Alicia Wiggins. Alicia was uh, just recently diagnosed with diabetes after she slipped into a diabetic coma and spent days in the hospital. And it's, it's a new thing for her, so it's a lot of lifestyle changes and everything coming Alicia's way, so we're gonna pray for her today. So, that's what I have. Anybody else have anything? Okay, sounds pretty quiet out there. So as we gather this morning to come into the presence of our holy God, we must also be holy. We know there's a problem with that. We most certainly are not holy. All of us daily fall short of God's expectations for our lives, and we fail to keep his commands. Instead of being in his presence, we deserve to be banished from his holy face. And yet, in his holy love, our God provides the means by which sinners, like us, can stand in the presence of a perfect God like him. That means is the forgiveness of sins that comes through the perfect sacrifice offered before the Father. Fulfilling all the promises of the Old Testament and by the system of sacrifice that previewed his work upon the cross, God's only Son, Jesus Christ, delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to God's kingdom. In this kingdom, this gathering of God's people our holy God calls us to holy lives of love and worship that we offer up in his holy house today. We begin with our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal, Heal me, me, for I have sinned against you. In silent prayer, we come before our merciful Lord for his healing and forgiveness. Holy God, you have commanded us. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us give thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace. And love of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of love from above and for the salvation of all who trust in Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For his love to fill the whole world as the church of God walks in unity and proclaims the message of his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our congregation for its labors of love, and for all who offer in this holy house their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, heal, rescue, and redeem us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Holy Lord, in your deep compassion, you rescue and restore us as your holy people. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Leviticus. We're going to be reading the first few verses of the 18th chapter and then some more in the 19th. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you lived. And you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. 
You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all the night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it is also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his gracious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving the thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Please rise for our verse and gospel. Alleluia. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion 
He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay to you when I come back. Which of these three, do you think, proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day where charity and love prevail. My fault, I missed a verse. <laughs> Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior. Amen. Well, today we're doing something a little different. Our text for our message today actually comes from uh, the Old Testament reading, Leviticus chapter 19. But I, I want to do it a bit differently than what was printed in your bulletin. So I invite you, if you'd like to follow along, if you grab one of your pew Bibles, um, we're going to go through it. Um, it's gonna, you're going to find it on page 124. I think all the page numbers still match. It's been a while since we've pulled these out. You should find Leviticus chapter 19 on, uh, on page 124. I, well, this is large print. I, I forgot. The small print is different. 127 for the small print. Did you all find it? No? Leviticus chapter 19. Oh, 97. Leviticus. There we go. Let's try that. How about that? Now have we found it? Okay. Sorry about that. I, I got the large print, and then I remembered I'm the only one with one of those. But uh, anyway, in Leviticus 19, it's a speech that God commands Moses to speak to the people of Israel. And it begins with these words. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. 
It's verses 1 and 2. Now, throughout the speech, sections end with either I am the Lord your God or simply I am the Lord. There's, there's too much of the speech to consider going through the whole thing today. We'd be here probably till late this afternoon, and I'm guessing some of you might have plans. But, so we're just going to look at a few things. We're going to break it down, and we're going to look at the sections that kind of line up with our gospel reading from Luke. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip over verses 11 to 18. And in those verses, it's how God speaks to the Israelites on how they're supposed to interact with each other. Beginning with verse 11, he says, You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that's all well and good. And that's all about how you're going to deal with the people of Israel. But there's an expansion to that. And I want you to skip ahead to verse 33 and 34. And it says, When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And then God ends this speech through Moses with the words of verse 37. And you shall observe all my statutes and all my rules and do them. I am the Lord. Well, there, that's, that's the reading. Our theme for today, it says, holy God, holy people, holy lives, holy love. You shall be holy, for I am the Lord your God, am holy. So what does it mean? How, how are we supposed to be holy? Well, the structure of Leviticus helps us with that. If you want to go back this afternoon when you're sitting in the sun, nothing to do, uh, read chapters 1 through 16, and in it, God teaches ways that he provides holiness for his people. And then in chapters 17 to 26, that's for the other half of the afternoon, God speaks of, of how God's people made holy by him, will live their lives. And, and I want to talk about both of those sections this morning. Now, the holy God makes his people holy. We know that God alone is holy. But repeatedly in Leviticus, we hear God calling his people holy. And unfortunately, this can lead to an under misunderstanding. We, we can take this as meaning that God is demanding that the Israelites themselves be holy by their actions. That's, that's not the right way to hear it. In chapters 1 through 16 of Leviticus, before this morning's reading, that's where God provides to Israel, all of the different rituals and sacrifices and all of the instructions about how the priests are to interact. 
and how the priests are supposed to uh, handle the sacrifices and perform all of those things. And it's in that way, it's in what the priests are doing through their sacrifice and their actions that make the people holy. Now, we too can suffer from that problem because, as again, God only is holy. And if we go look at the New Testament, repeatedly in the New Testament, God calls us through the scriptures to be holy as well. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 28, Jesus says, You therefore must be perfect as your Father is perfect. Your Heavenly Father is perfect. Anybody meet that qualification? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your contact, since is it written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And then in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Now, when we read all those things, we can misunderstand them similar to the Israelites, in saying that this is a demand for us to make ourselves holy in our actions, in what we do, what we say. But once again, that's kind of the, the, the wrong way to hear it. How are we made holy? Ephesians 2, it's by faith through grace, not by works, so that no one may boast, right? It's faith, and it's grace, and it's all through Christ. We are holy through grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone. We can't do it ourselves. God makes us holy by giving us the holy life and the holy death of Jesus. That's what makes us holy. As for the Israelites, well, God provides holiness to them as well. We also can look at Luther's explanation of the third article. We worked on that a couple weeks ago. Remember? It's the Holy Spirit at work in us via the gospel. It's also through the sacraments, baptism, holy communion, that we are nourished. We're nourished with the holy water of baptism, the holy body and blood of Christ. And as with the Israelites, we, God's people, we are made holy by him to do our best to lead holy lives. We are made holy by, by God's holiness. And it says God's people live holy lives in holy love. That can be a bit of a challenge to us sometimes. And that second half of Leviticus in chapter 17 to 26, it focuses on life together with other people. We saw what it looks like, right? Not stealing, not dealing falsely, nor lying or swearing falsely by God's name, not oppressing or robbing a neighbor. The list goes on. Kind of sounds like the Ten Commandments. But here's where it culminates. It's in verse 17 and 18. Holy people don't hate or bear grudges. Challenge? Can be, can't it? I have a friend of mine whose life motto is don't get mad, don't get even. Don't get mad, get even. I've talked to him about that. That's not what God's saying here. We can't bear grudges. We can't hate. Holy people love their neighbors as themselves. That's what we need to do. And along with loving God, that, that summarizes pretty well what holy living is. Even, even the lawyer in today's gospel reading understood that. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Holy living involves loving my neighbor. What 
was the lawyer's question. Who, who's my neighbor? Now, in first century Jerusalem, um, who did Jesus use as the example? He was a Samaritan, right? Samaritan Jews, we know all about them, right? Talk about grudges. The Jews held a good one against the Samaritans and vice versa. But he's using that as an example. And if you go back to verse 33 and 34 of Leviticus chapter 19, what does it say? It says, treat the sojourner the same as you treat a native Israelite. Who's the sojourner? He's somebody who wasn't a Jew, that wasn't an Israelite. And you're supposed to love that sojourner as yourself. In Jesus' day, that was a very radical statement for Jesus to be saying. It was even more radical for God to be saying it to Moses centuries before. It's a radical idea even today, unfortunately. Watch the news. There's not a lot of neighborly love going on out there. The holy people of God are to love unholy, non-Israelites, just as they'd love any other Israelite or themselves. And guess what? What applies to them in that case applies to us as well. We need to love everyone, Christian or not. We often limit our neighborly love. Sometimes it's based on Bible passages. Sometimes it's based on prejudices. The gospel acts, asks this very question. And so that's why Jesus tells the parable. The parable shows the leader's failure to love. It shows the Samaritan performing neighborly love. What a beautiful picture of Christ's love. He came to us beaten and dying. He bandaged our wounds, paid what was required for our healing by his own wounds and death. God truly expects holy lives like that from his holy people. Remember verse 37, you shall observe all my statutes and all my rules and do them. I am the Lord. And what did we hear in the New Testament? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And then finally, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Now, quite remarkably made holy by our baptism into and our faith in Christ's death, we do live holy lives in Christ's love toward our neighbor. But we have to always recognize who is your neighbor? You need to recognize what are my neighbor's needs. And then most importantly, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. As a matter of fact, you have to love your neighbor the same way that Christ loves you. And then you know what? Here's the big one. You know what we have to do? We have to repent when we fail. Because we will. But we repent. We receive forgiveness and the holiness that God gives to us. And we try again. And we repeat that. Until Christ gathers you and I to himself. Or, better yet, he comes again. So you will be, shall be, are holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. You 
remember. God's holiness makes holy people who live holy lives in holy love. Amen. And now may that peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Doug, thank you for the ice. If you would, please rise and join with me as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the prayer of the church. Fellow redeemed, we have been made holy by the blood of Jesus and have been called into his eternal kingdom. Let us then lift our prayers before our holy God, trusting that he hears and answers us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for the mercy you have shown us. We have not lived the lives of holiness you require, choosing to put ourselves first instead of fearing, loving, and trusting in you above all things. And yet you transfer the holiness of your Son to us as we trust in him as our Lord and Savior. Your name be holy among us as we live our lives for your glory. Lord Jesus, you reign at the Father's right hand as King of kings and Lord of lords. As you minister to us now by your Holy Spirit, working through the means you have established, your kingdom breaks into our world and touches our lives with your love. Your name is holy among us as we share in the blessings of your kingdom. Your will, O oh Lord, is for all people to know you and confess you as their holy God. Send your church into every corner of the world that the Great Commission be accomplished as people of every nation are baptized in your name and taught the fullness of your word. Lead, guide, and bless our congregation along with all churches and workers in your kingdom that we dedicate our lives to sharing the good news of Christ, loving you, grant that we also love our neighbors as ourselves thereby revealing your son to the world he died to save. Your name be holy among us as we walk according to your gracious will. Giving, Lord, you provide daily bread to all your creation. Help us to receive with thanksgiving every blessing your hand provides. As stewards of your good gifts, grant that we be wise managers with what rightfully belongs to you sharing with our neighbors in need. Grant that your love be extended through our generosity. Your name be holy among us as we receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. Gracious Father, you give the healing balm of your forgiveness to all who cling to your Son by faith. Bless those who stand in need of spiritual hearing healing, and also those who cry out for relief from their physical suffering. Especially this day, we pray for Penny, Herman, Ingrid, Andrea, Lowell, Harold, Penny, and Alicia, as well as all those on our extended prayer list and those we name now in our hearts. We entrust all those in need to your healing care. Your name be holy among us as we experience your forgiveness and healing. Blessed Redeemer, 
You have rescued us from the domain of sin and death by your death upon the cross and resurrection from the grave. Satan stands defeated because you live and reign to all eternity. We give you all praise and glory for the work you have done to lead us away from temptation, to deliver us from the evil one, and to transfer us into your eternal kingdom. By your grace, through faith in you alone, we receive the gifts that you pour out upon us as we stand in your holy presence. Your name be holy among us as we stand in your victory. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. For yours alone is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. As the bulletin states, there's a basket in the back where you can drop your offering. You can also drop it anytime in the mailbox out front. You can mail to the church. And if you're technologically inclined, you can download the church app and donate through there. And as always, thank you for your stewardship. If you would, please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has given us the holiness of his forgiveness, and by his holy love has made us his holy people. Therefore, with angels and with archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given up for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, do lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take us.
Please rise for the post-communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the saving gift of your Son's body and blood. By your mercy, enable us to love you with all our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Alleluia. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Mm -hmm. 